And as there was nothing before all things, an absence of witnesses gave in to the proliferation of life in essence. Beings to whom form no purpose mattered fitted between the tapestry of this creation that came to be known as the universe, an all-encompassing term to contain the vastness of this invisible creation. But creation, when so visible, seems finite, and the beauty of creation does not satiate but seduces, and it wasn't long before the witnesses to creation's beauty no longer appreciated their special place in the universe. Instead, hungering for more. This is the game Endogenesis by David Go. It plays one or two players in a co-op fashion, three players, and then four and five players. We'll be discussing the new added rules to the base game Endogenesis, as well as discussing Endogenesis Beyond, which includes new cards for each of the classes and factions, as well as a new class, the Dynamo, which has the faction of these Voltaics, which includes Voltaic tokens in the game. And in Endogenesis, you're basically playing as a formless being that gets created in the universe, and now is attempting to form its own existence, dealing with monsters that come on the field, as well as dealing with other players. And depending if you're playing the co-op mode or if you're playing in the competitive mode, will determine what you're doing. In the co-op mode, you and another player, or up to another player, will be attempting to destroy or defeat the Realm of Chaos. This stack of cards here that's going to have beasts that are either normal beasts or legendary monsters, as well as things like distortions that change the game as it goes along. And if you can get through the deck before your deck runs out or everyone perishes, you'll win the game. And then when you're playing the competitive mode, if you're playing the three-player mode, there's a base game which you're fighting against other players and the realm of chaos and then there's a four or five player mode which is basically a simplified version of the three player mode however if you would like and you have experienced players you can play the same three player mode in the four and five player mode of the game endogenesis and that's basically the idea of the game there's a new setup there's some new rules there's some added things like a shop as well as of course new classes and cards which we'll go ahead and talk about down below i'll give you a very simplified version of how the setup works so that you can go ahead and read in the rule book when you set the game up. I'll explain how turns function and what you're trying to do in each of the different types of variable player uh, gameplay modes, and then we'll come up and we'll discuss my review of the game Endogenesis. First there was nothing, and then there was. Endogenesis, the beyond. The expansion to the base game Endogenesis, along with the new rules, will be incorporated when we discuss this game. But before we get into the full setup of the game, as well as how to take a round or two, let's just talk about what you get in the game. And of course, you're going to be getting player reference cards. The first and most important thing, each player is going to be taking one of these player reference cards. It'll tell you all the symbols in the game, as well as what you do during your turn. Go ahead and place it next to your character character board along with your other cards you'll be getting. Uh, these are your HP boards and HP boards will go from 1 to 15 but you'll start at 3 HP. You'll have a max HP token and then you'll have an HP token which will determine how much you have max throughout the entire game. So you might have 6 max HP when you take 3 damage. You will use the basic HP token to go down to 3 and if that ever hits 0 you are going to die. In a co-op game you're simply out of the game and when you're playing in the competitive variant something negative will happen to you briefly but then you'll be able to come back into it you have these victory point tokens that are basically either going to have you win the game or in a cooperative mode will determine how well you did while playing the cooperative mode these are energy or currency you'll be using throughout the game which will allow you to play cards and utilize cards depending on the type of cards that you have in play in front of you on your tab below these are the new Endogenesis Beyond tokens, which are for the Voltaic class. Voltaic tokens basically will be placed on the cards. You'll gain these tokens and you'll utilize them. They'll go away, they'll come, and they'll give you benefits for having them. However, they do explode and they will be removed from your board at a certain period of time. Then we have these type of crystals here, which are going to basically increase your class abilities and allow you to do more powerful spells when playing your cards. And they'll also let you gain max HP and potentially some other unique things as well. You're going to have four different main decks. You're going to have the Realm of Knowledge. This is the deck of cards that players will be drawing from in a co-op or a competitive mode, which will also, in a, co or a cooperative mode, uh, or competitive mode, you will have a separate shop of cards where you'll be placing three out from a stack of 15 in the co-op or you'll simply have these put into this deck here and when you're playing the competitive mode, you're simply going to drop three out from the top of the main deck. 
This is the Realm of Wonders. Every single player is going to get, what, two of them and choose one of them at the beginning of the game. And then whenever you max your HP from, to, from 5 to 10 to 15, you'll get an additional one of these cards. Very, very powerful abilities. And once you utilize them, they'll give you some unique effect. But they're a one use for the most part. And when they have been used, they are now gone. Classes. These are very, very powerful classes. The Soul Eater, the Enigma, Bastion, Deuce, X, Formless Deity, and Dynamo, the new class, are classes you can obtain after you've played all of your skills down of the types that are required in order to gain the class card. So, for instance, if you want something like the Dynamo, you'll have to have four of the new Voltaic skills in play in front of you in order to gain this. And if you do have that, you just simply put it in front of you, and the reward will give you something unique and uh, very powerful, or you can have a passive, which will give you something throughout the entire game which can be pretty useful as well but it's not an instant gratification it's more of an overtime gratification the realm of chaos and of course when you're playing this game all of these cards will be set up in a specific way but regardless the realm of chaos will be dropping out things like monsters they could be legendary or they could just be a basic monster and they'll have a certain amount of hp when you play with monsters in the competitive mode you'll just be using this track here to track the monster's hp but when you play with the cooperative mode you'll have two additional hp bars out there that will basically uh, come into play whenever somebody defeats a legendary monster a new monster spot will open up and more monsters can trigger out up to a max of three utilizing these two health areas here you have the distortions area which basically will you play events uh, will, will, whenever these pop out these will be events that will come out and players will gain certain things and then the distortions if i can find one really quick here will basically stay in play until they trigger i don't know where, where any of these are but there's there's some of them in here somewhere uh here's one here that one here says skills that cost three or more cannot be used, but this ends as soon as a monster dies. And that will stay there until a monster dies or a new distortion comes out into play. And basically this is the deck that you'll be dealing with when playing the cooperative mode of the game. Or if you're playing the competitive mode as well, you'll simply be dealing with these along with against your opponents. But the way to win is to destroy the monsters that will give you victory points throughout the game up to a certain point in which you'll have enough victory points to just simply win the game outright, which I believe is three victory points. And that's pretty much the main thing you're getting in the game. You're also getting this nice little board here, all of these tokens that you see. And then they set up of two abilities and four cards in your hand for each of the play modes of the game, Endogenesis. So let's go ahead and go down below. I'll set it up for, I guess, three players, but I'll only show you how one player plays to give you an idea of that. And then I'll talk about the competitive mode, cooperative mode as well. And then we'll come up and I'll discuss my review of the game and discuss some of the new and interesting aspects to the base game as well as to the expansion mode as well. Here is the cooperative mode, and we're just going to show you one player, but you can play with two players, and it functions exactly the same, except players will go, player A takes a turn, player B takes a turn, the monsters will all take their turn, rinse and repeat. In a single player mode, it's just player A will take a turn, and then the monsters will take a turn, rinse and repeat. And so to begin the setup for the cooperative mode, Grant is here, because he read the rules fully, he's a better ex explainer when it comes to setting up a game, but let him discuss it right now so pull take the realm of chaos deck take out the all of the crystal rush and age of wisdom cards and all of the monster cards shuffle all of those up deal five cards out take the rest of the cards that you have left over and shuffle them back into the deck put the five cards you put on top and that'll set up the realm of chaos deck for players to get set up everyone's going to be dealt cards from the deck until they have four activated non-ultimate abilities in which case all the extra cards they have are going to be shuffled into a pile and everyone's going to draw four and then from that you're going to shuffle those back into the deck and everyone now has all of the the cards they need from the realm of knowledge and the realm of chaos to win um they're going to set their their player hp to three and get three crystals at this point they're going to take uh two of their four abilities and discard the rest and then they're going to choose to spend these crystals to either increase their HP. When they hit 5, they take two Realm of Knowledge cards, or two Realm of Wonder cards. Choose one, discard the other. and Or they can choose to spend their crystals to upgrade their abilities, which will give them augmented effects. Which are down here in the bottom. So yep. one crystal gives this effect on this base ability, and three will give this one. Recommended setup is to start with two extra HP and one crystal on one of your skills. Um, in the co-op, you're going to take 15 cards from the Realm of Knowledge off the top of the deck, deal three out in a shop, 
in the regular game, you're just going to deal three out off the top of the deck. Because in the the co-op game, when the deck runs out, the game's over. So it doesn't matter in the, the competitive version. And that should be the setup. So basically now we're going down to player turns. And to begin, we're going to put a monster out onto the field, yep. right? Which is when going it... to be flipping these cards over into this area here. Yep, so from this point on, if there's ever a not a monster in that slot bot, you'll keep revealing cards off the top of the Realm of Chaos deck until there is. And we found a Chimera. And the Chimera has 5 HP, so we'll move this HP to 5. And this is the cooperative mode. And we have an initiative, uh, we have an active, and a death cry. Initiative basically activates instantly, and this says it does one damage to all players. And since we're only playing with one player, we're going to push this one down here. Let's also say that he chose this Realm of Wonder card, and he discarded this one here. Ooh, actually, yeah, well, whatever, it doesn't matter. This is a good one, though. And then the initiative will be done. Every play player has taken their one damage. This is the active ability, which means on monster turns, active abilities will trigger, and they will do usually damage to players. And the final thing is a death cry. When the monsters perish, if they have a death cry, this will activate and do damage or something else to players. Down here at the very bottom are rewards, which will give you these crystals here or allow you to draw cards with this blue symbol. And now we can begin the game with the first player or the single player, as we would say. We have four slots for our basic skills here. And right now we have two basic skills, so we can have two more. If it's a shield, it'll be placed face down. And shields can basically be triggered upon taking damage. You can flip them up. Shields do not uh, cost, uh, cost anything until they are flipped up. And neither do these guys. These are all free to play, but when you want to activate them, they'll have a cost as well. Additionally, there's a secondary slot, and that slot is going to be for initiative cards and I believe death cry cards. Death cry cards. Death cry cards are cards that will trigger when you die. And in the competitive mode, they'll be very useful. In the cooperative mode, they're not even in the deck. So initiative cards will be the ones you will see. Initiative cards will have a little shield symbol with a couple rings around it, which will they're look like this one down here. Shields. Yeah, so this fortify thing here, I believe. That, oh, no, it's a shield. Reaction. Okay, so there, there's an initiative cards, which I think we can pull out really quickly for you guys somewhere in the deck here. We'll go ahead and show you. And it looks something like this one yep. here. This is an initiative card. This will be placed in its own separate slot. So you'll have five slots now as opposed to the normal four from the original base game. And then you've got your hand of cards here. Now on your turn, you're going to be able to play cards down as skills up to four. And then additionally, when you play three skills down, you can play an ultimate. And if you have all of the same type of skills or meet the requirements of these guys, you can take these. Once you play the Glyph of Ascension card. Yes, there's a Glyph of Ascension card that's hidden somewhere in the Realm of Knowledge, which you can go ahead and play, which will allow you to activate a class, which is very, very powerful. So let's go ahead and begin the turn with this guy here. We'll just go ahead and show and explain how a turn can work. Right now, I've got my three crystals that I've spent uh, two for for a maximum of five HP, letting me draw this Realm of Wonder. And then I'll go ahead and put this one here on the Magnate pulse or magnetar pulse now in order to use these cards you have to exhaust them and the cost to exhaust them is located right here uh, up here is the cost if it is in your hand or the amount if it's in your hand to utilize it as a currency so right now i've got five currency i can discard to use skills so i'll discard this one here which is worth four currency and i can then use both of my skills if i want and the first one here says it does two damage um, uh, plus two of these little voltaic tokens and then it discharges and then if it, if it discharges which it means if it has four or more uh, it targets all enemies instead so in this case i will use two of my four i'll put two of these guys on this card and then it does th uh, th uh, three damage because it has a plus one here right here that's what one, one little crystal so it does three instead of two and i'll do it to this monster so one two and three that is done with that. I have two more currency to use, so I can go ahead and turn this one to the side. It doesn't have a crystal on it, so it's just going to do its base attack, which says uh, choose, deal two damage to an enemy or one damage to all enemies. And I'll go ahead and do two damage to an enemy, thusly reducing Chimera's life point total to zero. And when this guy passes, he's going to do four damage to the slayer of this card, which would be this guy here. And realize if that happened, 
this character would hit zero HP and that player would die in fact. So you might wanna not actually do that. So you have to be very, very careful how you choose to take your actions. But if we pretended that he actually just took three damage instead, which we'll go ahead and do that, he'll go to one, so we'll keep him alive just to show you. This Chimera will be dead. Right you're going to go ahead and gain two of these little crystals here, and then you're going to go ahead and draw a card. And, oh, sorry, not from this one here. But yeah, 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 draw one card. You'll draw one from the yeah. Realm of Knowledge deck. Then, after that, you're going to reveal from the Realm of Knowledge, because there's no monster here anymore, or the Realm of Chaos, and you'll flip over until you find a new one. Ah, there's a legendary one, without a mercy either. So his HP is going to go to seven. He's got initiative, which means he steals one of these tokens from each player if they have one. So he'll steal one here. And if this player ends their turn, the active is going to do two damage to all players equal to the amount of tokens on this. So, <laughs> The just to, just to say, the cooperative version of the game is pretty challenging to Very say the least. I have beat it, but it is challenging. And provided this player were to stay alive, he would then go ahead and begin his turn by drawing two cards. He would then turn all of his inactive abilities active, and he would continue playing throughout this entire deck, doing whatever the Realm of Chaos says, whether it be distortions that come into play, more monsters, or simply things that will help him or her out. And let's go ahead and talk about the competitive mode of the game now. It functions very similarly, right, Grant? Yep. So how does it go ahead? How do we go ahead and start the game? It's going to be the you exact same setup. It's the, the most exact part. same setup, except the cards that were excluded specifically for this mode are going to be shuffled into their respective decks. You also won't need these either. This is only going to be yep. for the you only need them mode. for each player. So in this case, players are going to get two specific abilities, just like they normally would here, as well as a hand of cards. And players are going to go ahead and take turns in turn order, starting with this player, the next player, the next player. After everyone has taken their turn, then the monster is going to activate, and it'll do its active yep, ability. Just like whoever. the normal start of the round, everyone's going to draw two. Uh, so they're going to draw, if they have no victory points, they're going to draw three cards, and then they're going to discard one card from their entire hand. If they have any number of victory points, they're just going to draw two. So having less victory points is going to actually give you a benefit in the game for the competitive mode. And of course, as you gain more, which you need three to win, that is going to limit you on how you draw cards. Yeah, for example, there's no penalties on death when you have no victory points. Also, the death, uh, the death rattle cards or the death cry cards are going to be in effect. So you'll be able to play them instead of your initiative cards and you'll pay for them... Uh, when you play them and when you die you'll trigger them and this one for example just says deal damage equal to 50 percent of your max to your slayer yep and so initiative cards and death rattles must be played as soon as you put them down whereas the other cards the shield cards are played are, are paid for when you reveal them during basically something happens to you you can flip them over as yeah, whenever the, the, the trigger is met you can pay for it and reveal it and the same is said for the shop now. The last thing we can really talk about is the shop here. Once in your general, turn's concluded, yeah. uh, you're going to access your shop phase while the next player is taking their turn. Uh, it's pretty simple. You can take a card uh, for the cost, which is, I believe, just one crystal in the competitive. And then uh, if you ever buy a card, then the rest of the cards get discarded and three more come out. Once the next player is done, you, you lose your access to the shop, and the next player gains their access to the shop, or the third player takes their turn. So crystals can be used for buying cards, upgrading abilities, and giving yourself max HP, which is very useful, right? Yep. And of course, in the game, you are attacking other players. So when you hit another player with your abilities, and it'll tell you, choose, uh, you know, choose to do two damage to an enemy, and an enemy could be a monster or another player, as well as do one damage to all enemies. Well, that will be everybody involved. When you knock a player out, I believe you get a benefit for that as well. Oh uh, yeah, you gain one crystal, I believe. So every time you knock somebody out, you gain a crystal. And depending on the amount of victory points you have when you perish, like Grant said, you will suffer consequences. Generally speaking, if you have no victory points, you'll, you won't suffer nearly as bad as somebody with one, two, or yeah, one or even yeah, two Yeah, there's no points. penalty when you have uh, no victory points. You draw two cards uh, like normal uh, and then discard one and then you just respawn. And then the next penalty is you uh, don't draw, and then the next penalty is you lose a turn. Ouch. And then the, uh, and then you get both of the penalties, something like that. Yep. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Cooperative and a competitive mode of the game. In the four and five player mode of this game, it plays similar to the three player. Yeah, I'll just go over the tactical mode real quick. So sure. the tactical mode, it's designed to teach players the game a lot faster. Yep. So all you're going to do is when you're setting up the game, you're going to take out all of the event and distortion cards. 
and you're going to take out all the class cards from this deck. So you this, won't have access to the These class cards or these ones here? Uh, you're, the, the cards that allow you to level up. Oh, uh, okay. So, so the classes won't be in play for this one. Uh, it's pretty simple. At the start of your turn, you just draw two. If you ever die, you just spawn back at the start of your turn. And that's it. And if you wanted to, you could also play the four and five player mode as the three player mode, the more advanced version of the game for more advanced players in the game. Yeah. Endogenesis. I think we pretty much covered everything. I believe so. We'll just go ahead and discuss the new cards, the new tokens here, and uh, the competitive mode and cooperative mode variants as well, because there's a lot of new rules since our last playthrough of this game. Discussing the game Endogenesis with the expansion The Beyond. Are you ready to do it? Yeah. So there is uh, a lot of new rules updates for the base game. And in fact, I think a lot of improvements as well. The main being the setup for the game. Mm -hmm. They've done it to the point where it's basically they made sure he made sure that the cards that you he wanted you to get to begin the game with are actually what you get to begin the game yeah, with. Yeah, like one of my problems when I first started is I get like a crappy combination of two abilities and then I just constantly die. And I was like, okay, well, this is fun. But now, with the new changes to the rules, you have you a lot more choices. Pick two. That's that's a, a lot more reasonable. And of course, another thing too with the base game is the shop mode as well that you can go ahead and add. No, that's, that's added with the expansion. Oh, it's with the expansion. Okay, well, with the shop mode, regardless, you can add cards even that you see. You have even more options to expand yourself, especially because in the cooperative mode of the game, it's. Oh, it's very, very challenging. As you saw, we lost twice just trying to explain the game because you need to make sure you choose the right cards in order to satisfy the means to achieve victory in the game. Uh, some new stuff for the base game as well. What are some other interesting things that they added? Uh, they moved the the reactions used to be in the same spots as the, the initiative Shields and, and whatnot. Uh, death cry. So, so one of the things you could do is you could return a reaction to your hand and replace it with an initiative, and at the start of your turn you'd pay for the initiative and no trigger. But now uh, they have like a passive slot for death cries and initiatives, which you just pay for when you play them and you put them down. And it gives you an extra slot to do even more things during the yeah. game. And they don't count towards your class slots at all. Which is either. nice. Very nice. Uh, with the expansion of the game, which provides the new cooperative mode for one or two players uh, that provides quite a bit of challenge to the game i would say uh it's one of those things where you're very likely to lose earlier on as well as potentially in the middle but as you yeah, grow so. and you learn the game better uh, you'll get better and better at it and of course midway through to the end you have a much more likelihood of succeeding even though even more monsters start popping out as you defeat legendary monsters yeah, our first game i died in the third round and he beat the game yeah so yeah, so it's it's one of those things where you can even have one of your allies trying to help you push you along to increase your potential to win the game, right? And you're not using classes, though, so there are some reduction... Uh, Sorry, what? You're not using the class cards in the cooperative mode. No, you are. The only time you don't use them is the tactical mode. The tactical mode strips, like, everything away. You just have a... a, a oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, the four and five player mode, yeah. which is the tactical yeah. mode. Uh, let's discuss the expansion as well, which comes with the Voltaic okay, the Beyond tokens. has the Voltaic cards, uh, which are neat. They add the counters and the discharge, and it lets you do some wacky combos, which is nice. It gives you even more variety to that, the game. That's the, the one that adds the shop, which is which is nice as well. Um, the Dynamo is pretty cool. Yep, the Dynamo is a new class card as well that's been added. What's this one do over here? It says... Uh, reward. So you can choose a reward or a passive. The reward is your skills deal double damage and deal, deal double damage and plus damage this turn. Or as a passive, at the start of your turn, you can distribute three Voltaic tokens to equipped Voltaic skills. Wow. Wow. That's really useful and really, really powerful. I actually think I like that passive more. And of course, you can use those skills to uh, the classes to improve your skills throughout the oh, game. Oh, the monsters they add are really interesting. Like like the legendary monster that popped out, where they interact with the the voltaic tokens in certain yeah. ways, where they'll do more damage based on who has them equipped. And if you don't choose to use them, they pop out. It won't be so detrimental. One one of the monsters, it, it does nothing. But when you attack it, it just stores voltaic charges, and then on its turn, it burns all of its voltaic charges to explode on yeah. everybody. Or another one is it has a shield when you hit it. And after you hit it with the shield, it will do damage to you. So you have to choose when and how you want to do damage to that specific monster, which can give you a little bit of buying time in the cooperative mode of the game. And then the competitive mode, it's more so that you can actually pop other players while dealing with trying to gain those victory points. Because victory points are very important in the competitive mode of the game. If you can get three of those, you'll win the game. However, when you're playing the cooperative mode and you're getting victory points, those tokens can count as single damage, true damage, which will go through shields and ignore reactions. Whereas 
it can also be saved for mm -hmm. the end of the game. If you have a lot of them, or you know a certain amount, you'll be scored based on how well you did. Now, have you talked about the mercy rule yet? Oh, mercy with monsters. Some monsters have mercy, which means based on your max HP, they might just disappear and come back later. Yeah, there's one monster whose active ability kills anyone who has five or less max HP. And co-op, that's terrifying in uh, in the the co co uh, competitive. Yeah, it's also it's also bad. Yeah, but not as bad. But if if anyone has less than ten max HP, it just goes to the bottom of the deck to show up later. There's one monster that literally just kills any player that only has 5 HP. Yeah, that's the one I was talking yeah, about. That one is really, really nasty. But, but it, it has the mercy rule, so if you have less than 10 max HP, then it just goes, it away. Just goes away and yeah. another one comes out. Which is a nice way of balancing the game as well. Yeah, so the really, really scary monsters, they won't show up till you should be prepared for them. Uh, I personally liked this game when I first got the base game and got to play through it. Uh, the artwork I thought was fantastic. The yeah, storyline like is solid as well. I think, yeah, just got some really unique creative style artwork. I don't see a lot of games with this kind of bizarre, I don't know, like, is it like sci-fi themed or like, oh, let's show them the same artwork Cosmic sci-fi. Cosmic sci-fi. I don't Something know, but like whatever that. it is, it's really, really cool. It's got a lot of gears and whirs and whistles and all that kind of stuff. Um, and with this new expansion and the new rules added to the game, I think it presented an even better version of the original game. And if you have the base game and you want to play with the new rules, I strongly suggest you do so, especially because the setup cleans up a lot of things. Now, what I can say about the setup is it's more complex than I would like. There's a bit of like complexity to the setup of yeah. the game. And as we're going through it, he's like, do this and this. I'm like, okay, okay. He's like, and then this and then this. And I'm just like... Uh, okay, 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 I get it, I get it. And after you play two or three times, you'll, you'll probably figure out it's not as complex. You'll understand it what it's trying to do, and then you can just shortcut it in the appropriate ways. Yeah, yeah. And um, of course, like I said, with the competitive cooperative mode, it's very challenging to start out the game, and you need to make sure you choose the right things. Otherwise, you're going to you're going to die. It's yeah. going to be a quick game for you. Uh, the competitive mode, it doesn't doesn't just dis disable you when you have a when you're when you're lacking so players aren't going to be targeting players who have low victory point counts it'll forcibly make players kind of go after players who are more likely to win as opposed to picking on certain players yeah which is and, and plus like if a player has no victory points then a player has two victory points and you kill them both like the player has two victory points is going to lose a turn and so that's fine. The player has no victory points, just going to come right back into it. And you're getting crystals for doing so. So you still get points and things like that for so, defeating so, players. Yeah, so it'll, it'll slow down the, the people who are ahead. The people who are behind, they'll still be able to chug along. Uh, overall, I really like Enogenesis. I like the expansion. I think it includes a lot of extra little details, a lot of fine details that is nice to the game. The shop is a really nice addition as well to the game. And of course, the Voltaic class and the skills are unique. And they di they're different, and they provide some kind of combinations that can go with the other skills throughout the game which is is fun the formless is a nice ability or a nice class to get when you don't actually have what is needed or you know you can't get what is needed in order to get a deity so you can get something like this one here and this one will let you get skills of four different categories together this one here and also you get useful. the the ability of whatever your alt is as that from the other class yeah so like if you had the, the dynamo alt and you go formless now you can have one of each and for the rest of the game, you have the Dynamo Alt. It's yeah, cool. Pretty, pretty useful. Uh, so overall, I really enjoyed this game. I think if you like a game that's challenging for a cooperative one or two player game, you're going to dig this. If you like yep. Tableau Management. And then for the three, four, and five player versions of this game, personally, I would I just like the idea of playing it in the three player mode throughout four and five players. But I can see why they would shorten it up and clean it up for those four and five player modes because I guess probably length of game would increase as yeah, well as challenge. I, I think the, the, the three player game is 45 minutes and the four and five player game is also 45 minutes with the cleaned up rules. So it's a way of cleaning it up, making it a little faster, which I totally can can get. Uh, so overall, what do you think? Um, I lose this game every time, so it's okay. I like I like the concept behind it. I'm just not good at it. Yeah. So putting the combination of cards in there, sometimes you just don't get what you want to. There is a little bit of a luck factor as well because you're drawing cards from the top of this deck of knowledge, the realm of knowledge. 
and sometimes you're just not going to get what you need. Or players might take cards into their hand and keep them or discard them so that you're not going to be able to earn those abilities, which can be a detriment to you as well. It is highly competitive in a 3, 4, and 5 player format, and you are attacking other players. I will say I've played three versions of this game, and this is the best form of it so far. I would also agree with that. I think this is my favorite version of the game of Genesis, but I've thoroughly enjoyed it each time I have played, this one being the most, as well as the fact that it adds that cooperative element to the game, which I also very much so enjoyed, even even though Grant didn't get to play that first specific game, I think it presented a lot of challenge and a lot of... I was watching it, it was very aspects. challenging. So I, I, I dig it. I, I liked Genesis. If you're interested in picking up this game, you can check out the link down below in the description. We'll show off this game is on Kickstarter. You can go and pick it up or let me know why you wouldn't want to pick it up or what you think the best aspects of the game are. Uh, the t changes from the original game if you backed it uh, back in the day and if you're excited to see all the new stuff, let us know down below in the comments. The last thing I think we're going to talk about is we're going to have a playthrough video, mm -hmm. which will be up uh, probably Monday, Monday night, something just before the Kickstarter campaign. So people that are watching the campaign and on the campaign will get a chance to see the game played cool, in its cool. in its full fuller tea in its full fuller tea. essence in its essence essence is tea s and t cosmic essence the cosmicness of the game so anyway check it out endogenesis down below thanks for thanks for reviewing not a problem so thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review if you like this video check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment as well as checking out that playthrough video for the game that we're coming out with on monday and additionally go ahead and check our website unfilteredgamer.com to the blog post and giveaways which we're doing a giveaway right now go to the site and you can pick up a game for yourself i believe it's the new simon game which is doing very very well also go ahead and check out our live streams every wednesday 7 6 30 p.m i keep saying 7 30 because it used to be 7 30 but now it's not 7 30 it's 6 30 p.m pst on facebook and then every other thursday we try and do a patreon live stream for those people who want to donate a dollar you do for our patreon go ahead and send it on over if you want i appreciate every little bit if not just thank you so much for watching i appreciate you and as always i look forward to delving into the beyond with you next time now watch as i fade away ready grant give me that give me that fade away ready here we go beautiful